I specifically want to mention about the Heilige Tzaddik today is Rutzvi and Melech of Dinov, the Heilige Dinov of the Bnei Sascha. The outside is today. And it happens, it happens to be that it means a little bit more to me than just uh, a regular Yotzad, a regular Tzaddik, which we try to speak a little bit sometimes whenever we can. But specifically, I want to speak today about Ritzvi Eli Melech, Medinev, the Heilige Dinev, Bnei Soscha, mainly because, a few different reasons, first of all because of his farm, which we'll get to in a moment, but also because my grandmother's great-great-grandfather was Rabbeinish Gaba. Now the truth is, I only found out about this when um, I wrote my Shabbos book, my Kashrus book, Kashrus in the Kitchen, and uh, we got a, a haskama from a very choshevet tzaddik, a big rov in London, Rabbi Holland Halpen, and he wrote in the haskama some of the yichas of the mishpacha. I never knew some of this. That uh, basically, my great great grandfather was Rabbeinish Gaba. Rabbeinish Gaba was the Gaba of the bnei Yisachar, and he was so choshev in his own right that uh, people used to give him kvitlach as well. And uh, there's a famous story as well, that I think it was the Blushiba that gave him a bracha, to, uh, that he, all of his descendants will be religious, so here I am today. So there's a lot going on over there, and it all comes from the Ba'alik of Bnei Sascha. So I just want to give the Olam just a minute to understand. The Tzvi Eli Melech of Dinev was a grandson of the sister of the Rebbe of Melech, the Noim Eli Melech, of Lezhensk. Now, for a few months before he died, I'm sorry, a few months before he was born, his mother went to visit her uncle, the Rebbe of Meilach, and she went to ask her uncle, the Heilige Tzaddik, the Noim Eli Meilach, what should she name the child that's about to be born very, very shortly. So the Tzaddik, the Noim Eli Meilach, said, you're going to give birth to a son, and I want you to call him Eli Meilach. So the poor woman, she got such a shock, she went white. Does that mean, that, she didn't say it, but she thought it, does that mean that the, the Heilige uncle, the Noem Elimelech, is no longer going to be alive, and that's why you're saying I should call him Elimelech? She didn't know what to say. So the Tzaddik, the Rebbe Melech, obviously saw what was going on in her mind, and he said, if that's the case, I want you to call him Tzvi Elimelech, which is exactly what happened after she gave birth. She named the baby as she was instructed by her uncle, the Rebbe of Meilach. And Rebbe Meilach said to her, if you would have called him Ali Melech, then he would have been entirely like me. But now you gave him half my name and half another name, he's only going to be half like me. So that is the little bit of the history of the Tzaddik, the Dinava, Rutzvi Ali Melech, Medinav, the Bnei Sascha. The child grew up to be an incredible Tzaddik, and thousands and thousands of people who recognized his tzitkas, came to him to get brachas. And he wrote a sefer, Bnei Sascha, on the, the months of the year and many of the Yom Tovim that we have. In fact, one story I'll tell you, that one day he was on the way to visit his Rebbe, the Eilige Chayzim Lublin. Chayzim Lublin, the sea, was known to see from one end of the world to the other end of the world. And he began to ask himself the following question. He wanted to know which one of the Yud base, the 12 Shvatim, the tribes, did he stem from, did he come from. And he thought to himself, you know, it's very interesting because as Hanukkah always comes, I start to experience tremendous, tremendous Kedusha and spiritual delight and Shechina when Hanukkah is about to be here. So he said to himself, it can't be that it's because I come from the Hashem That's why I feel this connection to Hanukkah. It can't be because I'm called the Hashem because I'm not a Koyin. So where does this come from? So he decided, when he's in Lublin, he's going to ask his rabbi, the Chayza, the Chayza knew everything, the Chayza knew and understood from one end of the world and saw from one end of the world to the other end of the world. So I'll ask my rabbi, he's got Ruach HaKodesh, she'll know where I come from. So he arrived at his rabbi's house. Before he even managed to say one word, the Chayza said to him, you should know that you actually descend from the tribe of Yisachar. And as to the question why, you experience a certain Kedusha and feeling of holiness around Hanukkah time, it's because at the time of the Beis HaMikdash, you were a member of the Beis Din of the Hashmonayim, and that's why Eretzvi uh, his Sefer, the, the Bnei Sascha, Sons of Yisascha, actually is a very, very big Sefer to be learned the whole year, but specifically people learn it a lot on Hanukkah, because it has a certain Kedusha. 
right? We're dealing Rabbi Yisai with a Yid, tremendous Kedusha, tremendous Tahara, who mamish, a half of the Noim Elimelech, would have been a whole uh, Noim Elimelech, it's incredible. And as we always say, a day of a Yodzai is a day that the Kedusha of that Tzadik is with us, that we can grab a little bit of that holiness, a bit of that Sitkus, and we should all be Zaycha, that it should be a Ilu for, our, for his Neshama, and it should be a Schos for us, for all our families, and for all of Kali's role.